سبحان من شهدت في وحدته الورى رب تعالى لا اله سواه My name is Rosmi Orozco and we became Muslims like 35 years ago. We, uh, we were introduced to some Muslim brothers that came to my house. My brothers and mom bought some Arabs because we were Christians and then that's how we became, that's, they introduced us to Islam. My name is Edmundo Orozco. Uh, I came to Islam about 30 years ago. This is my wife, uh, Estela Orozco. We're a large family and uh, we all embraced Islam one at a time. I was one of the last ones. My, my mother and my older brother were the first ones. And uh, I have a sister, Lucy, she's not here, but she's out of town. She also embraced Islam. I teach in a high school and I'm treated differently because of my Islam and, and because of that, I, I love Islam. Salam Alaikum. My name is Maria Orozco. And I became Muslim about 40 years ago. And I enjoy and like this religion. My name is actually Edward Orozco, and most of the brothers uh, call me Farouk. And one of the first brothers actually uh, that I met is the one who uh, gave me the name Farouk. When I met my husband, um, I don't know, the different family members had become, some had already become Muslim and some had not become Muslim. And my husband was one of the, the last ones to become Muslim. My name is Adam Orozco. I was born Muslim. My father embraced Islam before we were born, uh, him and my mother and uh, me and my whole brothers were born Muslim. Um, my name is Shelly Hernandez, maiden name of Shelly Wright. Um, I am an American Muslim and um, I'm originally from Arizona. I grew up in New Mexico, rural New Mexico. I am the second oldest out of six children to a family where my mother is a baptized Jehovah's Witness. I have been a Muslim, I would say easily over 30 years. Um, my birth name is Jennifer Sapp, and um, I was born in the United States. And um, in the year of 1966, and that year, oh, a year later, from what my parents told me, we moved to Zambia, um, Africa, and we lived there for six and a half years. My parents were Christian missionaries. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Nicole Orozco. And um, I'm Omar's cousin, and I was um, born into Islam. My parents converted to Islam um, after they got married, and I was the first, one of the first that was born into this religion. Um, we're blessed, alhamdulillah. And uh, it's big, our whole family, and we just have fun, and we play games. My dad, we host, he comes up with these crazy games. Um, you partner up, and it's like a baby food contest. So one person's blind, and your partner is feeding you blind. So it's, it's very interesting, different games, especially for the little kids. You know, you pop balloons, and it's like a little race, obstacle courses. You know, so <laughs> it's very... It's, we're full of life over here in the Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you and welcome again to our program Path to Guidance. Today's program is very unique. We're going to be speaking not just to an individual we're going to be speaking to a whole family that embraced Islam. Tens of people who came to Islam through one person in that family who changed their lives and their views of, about religions. And right now, they range in ages from 94-year-old grandmother to 17-year-old Muslim baby. We are at the home of Brother Omar Hernandez in El Paso, Texas. We are very pleased to be with his family today to share their steps on the path to guidance. We pray that those steps will be encouraging one for many of us and they will be enlightened for many others. Brother Omar, thank you for having us at your home. 
and it's a blessing to be with you and your family. Usually we start the program by giving our viewers an idea about the background of our guest. So would you please take us back to your childhood, where you grew up, and what you did, where you studied, and how you first came in contact with Islam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, for, for, for me, actually, uh, I was born in, in, in Germany. Uh, my father was in the military. Um, you know, I, I came back uh, to the States at, uh, at a very uh, early age. I think I was still uh, less than a year old. Um, and from there, we, we lived our mo the majority of our life here in El Paso, Texas. Um, and, you know, we were raised as Catholics. Um, we, I remember going to church every Sunday. You know, we went to a catechism, uh, and we, I received my first Holy Communion. I believe I was maybe <clears throat> around eight or nine years old during that time. And, um, you know, of course, we, we continue to live uh, a regular American life um, for, those, for those years. And it wasn't until one of my, my uncles uh, who had uh, came in contact with some, uh, some Arabs from Saudi Arabia that uh, that was our first... Uh, experience with with Islam. Um, so with my uncle, his name was uh, Salman Orozco. He, um, with uh, with time, uh, he started to talk to these uh, these uh, Muslims. And uh, for for my family, um, my uncles, uh, four out of my uncle, uh, four out of my, I'm sorry, three out of my four uncles, they were altar boys in the church. So they had some experience with um, the Bible. And uh, my oldest uncle, Salman, he thought when he met these, these Muslims, he thought, well, you know what, uh, I'm going to show them the true way. I'm going to show them the, the Bible and, and bring them to the truth. So <clears throat> with time, yeah, with time, he started to uh, continue to talk to them. And uh, instead of him accepting, or them, them the, 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 the Muslims accepting Catholicism, he ended up accepting Islam. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, so the hunter became the hunty. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and you know, we're, we're all Hispanics. We're very close-knit. We're very, very tight. So <clears throat> with time, he ended up, uh, you know, going to my grandmother and, and telling her about uh, Islam, uh, my uncles. As a matter of fact, he was kind of, he was giving the dawah to the, to the rest of the family. Uh, for, for, for myself, I had, like I said, I had had a little bit of experience. I remember going to some parties uh, that, you know, with, with my uncle, and I remember, you know, talking with some of his friends who were, who were uh, Muslim, or Arabs from, from uh, Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> and they were very nice. Uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a child, I thought that they were very uh, nice. Uh, you know, they acknowledged me as, as a young boy, which a lot of times you don't see. How old were you back then? At that time, I think I was uh, probably about uh, nine, ten years old. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, through, <clears throat> through time, um, you know, I remember uh, conversations taking place um, with my mother. I remember her talking over the telephone, uh, even in, in very heated arguments about... Uh, with her what, brother. With her uncle. brother, yeah, my, my uncle, uh, Salman. Uh, you know, of course, raising her voice, and I don't remember all of it, but I knew it was around religion. So, okay. you know, that, that was just my experience with, with what I had. And uh, I remember, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that my father would say, is he would say, you know, just, just listen to them, but don't accept it. Just say yes, 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 but don't listen to what they're saying. You know, just okay. to, so you don't have to go through the... Brush it off. Basically. Yeah, just, just brush don't it off. Them, yeah, but the, just... Right. So just, just, just take it. You know, listen to it, but don't accept what they're saying. Um, so anyway, so then some time went, more, more time went by, and uh, I remember one time in particular that uh, I was at my grandmother's house, and, uh, you know, one of my other uncles, Mundur, he, he came, uh, he was actually also in the military, he ended up uh, um, coming from Germany, um, okay. so my mother was talking a lot to him. And she was saying, you know, I don't know what's, what's happening, but a lot of people are becoming Muslim. So at that time now, uh, my, my uncle Salman, who was, he was Muslim. My grandmother also accepted Islam at the time. Um, I think my, my, my other uncle, kind of, uh, Farouk, he kind of 
uh, was, was still kind of looking. And uh, I'm not sure exactly if anybody else at the time, maybe my uncle Salim also uh, had accepted Islam at the time. So my mother was getting worried, like, what's, what's happening? You know, uh, everybody's ex becoming a Muslim. What's going on? And even my mother, I remember her saying, uh, telling, telling my grandmother, you know, how could you, how could you leave us? You know, you brought Abandon us, us basically, yeah, yeah. you brought us to this religion and now you're leaving? So, so anyway, so she, she called my uncle uh, Mundo and she, she told him, she's like, I don't know what's taking, happening, but people are, 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 are leaving. They're becoming Muslim. Uh, <clears throat> so my uncle, he said, don't worry. He says, when I get back over there, he said, I'm going to straighten everybody out. You know, because he's very, you know, from, coming from a line of uh, Hispanics, you know, they're very macho. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he <laughs> if thought you know the word, to yeah. straighten things out. And... Yeah, so I'm going to come there and straighten, straighten everybody out. So sure enough, he came down and uh, they had, it seemed like they had a plan because I remember I was there and they had, they brought beer. Um, you know, they had actually even poured <clears throat> the beer like in the, you know, they have candlestick holders. They poured beer in there because they knew that this was a hot issue for, for Muslims. Uh, specifically, and they know your other uncle, that Muslim right, uncle, right, was going to yeah. come. Right, he was going to come to the house, so they, they, were, they were preparing. Wow. So, sure enough, he ends up uh, coming back to the house, and, uh, you know, he started, they started to, to argue. And, you know, I was in another room, but I could hear that everything started getting louder and louder. And then finally, when I came out of the room, I remember my father holding on to like a door jam, and then my uncle was pushing up against him, and he was trying to hit my uncle... Uh, Salman. And then at that point, uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, you know what, let's go. So he ended up leaving. They left. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a big... Who left him? And uh, the Salman, other Salman, yeah, Salman ended Did up leaving. Did he have some Muslim friends yes, he with Yes, he had, he had yeah, one, I think one or two Muslim friends with him. But then they all ended up leaving. And then, uh, you know, my, as, as a matter of fact, my uncle Mundur and my father, they were both drinking, so they were drunk also. Wow, um, what a but, confrontation. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so like I said, they were preparing for him. And then anyway, so he left. And then after that, you know, everybody, you know, my, my, my aunt was there. She was crying. Um, and it was just really a bad situation. Uh, so anyway, so that was another experience that I had. And, uh, you know, some more time again went by. And, uh, you know, maybe a, a year or two later, I don't remember um, um, exactly when it was, but my mother and father, they ended up getting a divorce. So, you know, they, they, uh, they went their separate ways. Um, you know, we used to go between the homes. Um, I, I ended up, <clears throat> like every, every other weekend, we would go to my father's home. So during that time, um, we had actually gone to, uh, to my, my father's home. And uh, I think during that, that weekend that we were at his home, my uncle Salim, he ended up bringing... Uh, some other Muslims from from Albuquerque to give dawah to my uh, now Uncle Salman, you mean? Or? No, no, this was Uncle Salim, the one who was fighting. No, no, Sal Salman. No, no, this actually Mundur is another. There's so uncle. many of you. Yeah, yeah. Confused, brother. Okay. Yeah, so this is uh, my Uncle Salim. Okay, Uncle Salim. So <clears throat> he ends up coming back, and he he was like he he moved to Albuquerque. He came back, and he he brought some other Muslims. So during that time, my mother had remarried, and uh, they started to talk to them about Islam. And, to your uh, mother and stepfather? Yes, yes. So I don't know exactly what happened, but by the end of the, the, the day that day, I, uh, she ended up, uh, and I don't want to say that she did, but I know for a fact that my stepfather, he said, you know what, I believe in it 100%. So my mother at that point, because she was, she was one of the strongholds saying, I'm, you know, we're not going to accept Islam, but... They started talking to my stepfather. He said he accepts it. He believes everything. And then for her, it was a big shock. Wow. So <clears throat> for, for her, I don't know if she committed or not at the time. But that particular weekend, I remember that she had uh, called up my brother. We used to, my, my, my father used to live very close to my grandmother. So we would walk. On Sunday, we would walk to my grandmother's house and wait for my, mom, my mother to pick us up. So <clears throat> she, uh, she ended up calling us there. And she says, um, you know what? Um, what do you think about, uh, and she's talking to my brother over the phone. Uh, I was still very young. And she says, so what do you think about uh, accepting, uh, becoming a Muslim? And my brother was just like, well, I don't know. I don't know. So anyways, he hung up and then, you know, he looks over at me and he says, um, uh, mom just asked me if, um, if we wanted to be Muslim. 
And I said, well, what do you think? And he says... You've been hearing a lot. Yeah, yeah. We were in conversations. And, and we didn't know much, but we knew <clears throat> that it was something strange. It was, it was something strange for us, very foreign. So just the word Muslim, it didn't sound like it fit us. But uh, my brother, he said, he said, you know, she asked if we wanted to be Muslim. And I said, well, what do you think? And he says, I don't want to be Muslim. And I said, no, no, me either. I don't want to okay. do that. So, I mean, this is my older brother, so I didn't, you know, I was going to follow, you know, what, what his thoughts were. So, you know, again, some more time went by, and I think another time uh, my uncle came back again, because, he, again, he was living in Albuquerque, my uncle Salim, he comes back, and he has two, two kids that were about the same age as my brother and I. So one time, <clears throat> one time that they came down, I, I don't know how, but I ended up going with, with my uncle, and he says, you know, you want to come with us? And I was going to spend some time with, with my cousin, so I said, yeah, I'll go with you guys. So we went, we go to his, his uh, mother-in-law's home. And then I think at the time it was probably either Dohor or Asr time. And uh, he says, you know, we're going to pray right now. And, you know, if you want, you can pray with us. You know, we pray to, uh, to, to God only. We don't pray to Jesus. Uh, we, we, uh, we don't pray to anything other than, than, than God. And to me, I, I said, subhanAllah, I said, that's exactly how I believe. Because I never, even, even as a child, I never believed in praying to, uh, to Jesus, peace be upon him, or Isa alayhi salam. I, and I, I never had that. As a matter of fact, I remember one time in particular that my mother was talking to my younger sister, and she, said, she was telling everybody, oh, listen, listen to what she's saying. And she says, okay, wh where are we going to go? She says, we're going to go to church. And she said, uh, and who are we going to pray to? She said, we're going to pray to Jesus. And I remember I got angry. Uh, Subhanallah, your natural reaction as a child was right. Not yeah, to not pray not to, to pray a to human, you. just pray to God. Right, exactly. So naturally, you felt you need to pray to God, not to another human being as a child, and that is very interesting. We're going to come back after a short break. I want to hear what the reaction was uh, from the people who were around you when they told you we're going to go to church, and okay, you give that natural reaction of a pure child. We'll be back in a few seconds. Please, please stay tuned. He told me that, that my brother Salman, the oldest one, he had been talking to my mother and, and my brothers that, with, you know, about Islam. And back then I was, we were, we were Catholics, but we weren't really, we would go to church on Sundays. So my older sister called me and she was telling me what's going on. And then her husband also was Catholic. <clears throat> so when we went back to El Paso, you, uh, I used to drink. I was drinking and one time we went to my, my mother's house. And what happened was I was drinking a beer and we had some beer in, my, in the refrigerator of my mom. My brother got the beer and he threw them out. He says, you can't bring beer into my mom's house. So he dumped them out, and I started cussing at him. I said, what do you mean, you know? And I grabbed it from him. He had some friends there that were Muslim, and then my sister's husband was there also, and he, well, he didn't do anything, but I got kind of upset, so I, I think I even spit at one of the Muslim brothers, and I, you know, I started cursing at him and told him, you know, about their religion, that it was stupid, and it didn't make sense, you know, what they were doing there. And I started, you know, insulting my brother cussing at him and we just you know luckily my brother-in-law took me away he says you know what because I'd been drinking so he took me to the outside and we took off we left We're back and welcome again. Brother Omar, you were told we're, gonna to, we're going to church and we're going to pray. And he asked who we're going to pray to and they said we're going to pray to Jesus. And he had a natural reaction. Tell me a little bit about that yeah, as so, a child. So my sister, she, she ended up uh, 
you know, she was very young, but of course I know that she was being uh, taught to say that. So I remember going up to her uh, afterwards, you know, after my, my mother and everybody left, and I said, look, we go to church and we pray to God. We don't pray to anybody else. We don't pray to Jesus or anybody. I said, we only go to pray to God. So, alhamdulillah, and I felt like it was, you know, I wanted to make sure that she had that in her mind. But I don't know, for, for me, uh, subhanAllah, that was just like a natural inclination to have that. That's why for me, when I accepted Islam, it seemed like it was something that was very easy for me. I didn't feel like it was a, a struggle or a fight because I, don't really felt, I didn't really feel like I had all of those, you know, teachings already, you know, put instilled in you. Yeah, yes. instilled in, in, in me. So, um, anyways, um, like I said, then uh, s some more time went by. And, um, you know, like I said, after speaking with my uncle, I, I, I said, you know, that's exactly what I believe. So I, I remember praying with them. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what they were doing, but I just did the prostrations and the movements that they did. And uh, subhanAllah, there, there was, uh, you know, it was, you know, I don't, I don't actually even remember at any point declaring the shahada in front of witnesses or anything like that. But we just kind of, uh, at a certain point, said, you know, we're going to, we're, we're, we're still looking into religion. But for, for me specifically, um, and I think even for my mother and for others, that we came to Islam through the Bible. Because, please elaborate on that. That's interesting. Yeah, because everything that we that we did, we wanted to try and validate it through the Bible. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I, I don't. I, I know, like my uncle uh, Salim was probably bringing a lot of information and showing docu you know, documentation in the Bible, saying, like for example, that uh, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, he he never said pray to me. True. You, you won't find that anywhere in the in the Bible. Uh, also, you know, as we would uh, read and research um, in the Old Testament, for example, it says in, in two different places, uh, don't eat the flesh of the swine, don't eat, don't eat the pork. And we thought, wow, how is it that this is our book and we're doing that? And so we even stopped eating pork before we accepted Islam because we found this in the Bible. And, uh, you know, even you know, in the Catholic Bible, they have images of... Uh, you know, the, the prophets and, and, and uh, Miriam and saints and all kinds of things. So, you know, I remember even looking at some of the pictures and, uh, and you see the uh, Miriam, the, the mother of uh, Jesus, uh, and she's wearing Peace hijab. Peace be upon her, Peace yes. Peace be upon her, yes. Wearing hijab. And, and I, you know, you think about it, it's like, subhanAllah, who are the people that are following this book, the Virgin Mary herself, yeah, the, yes. the best. Uh, so everything, like I said, was was for us uh, referencing the Bible, and then we were seeing that the Muslims were, were already practicing uh, those things. Um, so, you know, for me, I remember uh, specifically uh, one time, and I was still, I think I was in middle school now at, at, uh, during that time, that as we're, you know, we we finally had said, you know what, that's it, we're 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 going to accept Islam. We're going to become Muslim. So, you know, that, that particular morning, I remember waking up and I said, you know, I'm going to try uh, to pray like this, like the Muslims do, you know, put your forehead on the ground, and I'm going to ask Allah for something as, a, as like a confirmation or a sign. Like, like if this was like some, <laughs> some new kind of... Uh, some new kind of... You wanted uh, a sign. You wanted yeah, I wanted something. Validation I, to your thoughts. Yeah. And Even though it was, I was already validated, but I said, you know... This is like a new tool. Let's see how it works. I so, see. so during that time, I remember I was in the, in the band. I used to play the trumpet. And, uh, you know, they, they, they typically would have like chair competitions. So they would say, okay, play this section or play this line. And then whoever did the best, they got the first chair. And then second chair and third chair and so forth. So I remember during that time, I was like, I normally was like the top, but I was never the, the first. I was always like two, three, four. Uh, but I, never the top. So I said, you know, and I asked Allah that day, I said, you know, um, Help make, me, make, me, make me to be the first. Make me be the first that day. So, you know, smile. I remember going into to school and then, you know, pulled out our instruments and then we're just waiting there. And then the first thing the teacher gets up and she says, okay, chair test, trumpets, start. It was always by surprise. <clears throat> so the first guy he starts, he makes a few mistakes. Second guy... He's, he goes, he makes a little bit more mistakes. SubhanAllah, I, I played it, 
I had no errors, subhanAllah. And then I went to first chair. And then the, so the fourth the prayer guy, was answered. Yeah, subhanAllah, that, that prayer was answered. I thought, wow. It was like, uh, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's like somebody was like pouring water over you or something, just like something coming over you. Like, wow, subhanAllah. That, uh, and I knew after the fourth guy, I said, nobody's going to beat me. Because, you know, the dua was answered. Um, so, so then again, maybe uh, a few days later, there was, uh, 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 they're teaching us how to use the index for the library. You know, how to go through, identify, like if you're looking for a specific book or <clears throat> an author or what have you. So this particular day, they had like um, different index cards. And they had about like 10 different topics. And what you had to do is you had to go through each one of these index cards. You had to choose a category in each one. Mm -hmm. And there was a random question mm -hmm. for, for each one of these. But we had to go through the whole stack. So, subhanAllah, I remember that day, uh, I was, you know, you, we were teamed up with, with a couple of people. And subhanAllah, the very first question, the very first question that I, I remember picking up was, who, who was the, the founder of Islam? SubhanAllah. And I thought, SubhanAllah. Praise be to Allah. Yeah, I, said, I, mean, I didn't say SubhanAllah at that time, but I said, wow. It, it, it felt like, to me, it was like a, a, a big, you know, sign. I remember telling the, the, the guy who was with me, I said, man, I said, that's Muhammad. <clears throat> but, um, and nobody knew what you were talking about either. No, no, I mean, no, of course. For me, I knew what it was. I mean, obviously for him, he, did, he didn't think it was, it was much. It was just an answer. I know we didn't have to look it up. But still, again, like I said, uh, for me, the, uh, the fact that, uh, that that happened during that time, uh, again, was like another sign uh, for me. Uh, in, in, in coming to, uh, to uh, as a confirmation, subhanAllah, coming to Islam. Um, so you felt it was a confirmation, another confirmation. Yes, 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 subhanAllah. And I see why you can, you, why you're getting emotional. It brings you back <laughs> to those feelings. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, subhanAllah, it was, it was just like I said, it was, you know, of course we can say coincidence, but for me, I felt, you know, like I said, it's just like somebody just pouring like water over you, like, uh, you know, an awakening or something. And I said, man, subhanAllah, this is, this is definitely from Allah. Beautiful. Yeah, so Beautiful. like I said, it was just, for, for me, it was like a confirmation that we're on the right path. So at that point, your mom has declared her shahada to become a Muslim at that time, and your brothers, your brother and sisters, did they become Muslims or not yet? No, I think at that point, <clears throat> everybody had, I mean, I, I was still, uh, when I accepted Islam, I was probably about 12 years old. Uh, yeah, about 12, 13 years old. And um, <clears throat> my sister was still very young, so I don't know, I mean, she was, she was learning about uh, Islam. I mean, she was still probably in, in, probably around, yeah, six to seven years old. So I don't know if she really knew what was taking place. Uh, my brother and I also, um, you know, we accepted Islam. We didn't really know uh, about going to the masjid too often. So through the high school years, um, there, was, there was some practice, but then at a certain point, it was almost uh, non-existent. I mean, other than the faith. Not many Muslims, I believe, at that time. Right, were right. In El Paso. So Correct. you were in contact with Muslims through the travelers who came to learn here or train in El Paso. Yeah. And your contact with Islam basically was minimal. Very, very minimal. And there was no internet back then. and No internet, nothing no. Nothing available. No. So tell me how you managed at that time, you and your family, to grow in this religion. And how did uh, the environment around you affected you? Yeah, so, so for, for me, I think Wait. the exposure... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> for the exposure during that time was through uh, my uncle's... Um, you know, the times that they would come. I mean, uh, obviously when we were in school, we couldn't make it for Juma um, because at that time we were still in so school. So there was a little mosque? There was the a area. little masjid, yeah. Okay. It, was a, it was a house, as a matter of fact. On, uh, a house converted to a mosque. To a masjid, yes. Um, and I remember even going there and, and playing with some of the other kids like on the weekends when we would go. Um, but like I said, it was... Was there any other American... People with you there when you went there? No, no, not the at the time. Ones. Maybe, maybe myself and my brother. Outside of that, yeah, no, no one else. I see. No one else. But uh, so, like I said, the exposure was was very minimal. Um, we ended up 
uh, falling out of Islam. Uh, not, not necessarily falling out of it. We still believe we were Muslims, but as far as the practice, you know, we weren't making the, the regular prayers. And uh, I remember my grandmother talking to me one time saying, you know, um, every day that I wake up, I always make sure that I pray the Fajr prayer because Mashallah. you never know what's going to happen during the daytime. Maybe something's going to, uh, you know, maybe something's going to happen to you that day. That's and right. at least you know that you prayed That's right. that, 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 that prayer. So, of course, I started praying the Fajr prayer. The dawn prayer, basically. Yes, yes. the dawn Before prayer. Before the sun rises. Right. And then after that, I started thinking about it. And I said, hmm, you know, I could die at night. So maybe I should, I should at least pray Isha. You know, the, 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 so we the started final with prayer. Fajr and uh, add to Isha. And, and, and sorry, add to Isha, yeah. So, the final prayer in the evening, the evening prayer, yeah, okay. Yes. So during that time, uh, for a long time, I prayed only, during high school mainly, uh, praying Fajr and then praying Isha. Those were the, the, two, the two regular Salah. And uh, I don't remember at, at, at which point, but I know that it was already after I graduated from, uh, from high school that um, I started to get... Uh, more serious and you know especially when it came to talking with uh, some other uh, schoolmates when it came to religion sometimes I would hear them saying certain things like during history class I, I knew that some of the information was incorrect but I felt shy to say anything uh, and then at a certain point I said you know I, I, I should speak up I mean if I have the truth I should be saying something okay hold this thought We'll come back and discuss this period of your life and your interactions with other friends of yours at school after this short break. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes. Had been raised in an envi Christian environment of course, with my grandfathers being preachers and missionaries and my uncles and stuff, we were under the teachings of the rapture and, and that Jesus was going to come back and could come back at any time. And so we were always on the, the moment of, oh, what if he came back? So I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness as a child. I left the Kingdom Hall uh, when I hit uh, adolescence because they could not explain to me why I needed to pray through Jesus. As a Jehovah's Witness, we're taught to pray through, you know, your son, Jesus Christ, amen. And for me, it just didn't make sense. I saw Jesus as a mailman, and that couldn't possibly be his role. So I asked a lot of questions, was told to have faith, and instead I left the church. I went from church to church, different churches, different denominations, uh, you know, Bible studies groups and stuff, learning and, and stuff and everything, inquisitive, loved to talk about God and Jesus, you know, with my family and friends and everything. I was very Catholic. He told me that half his family was Muslim and half were, I didn't even know what a Muslim was. But we got married by the Catholic Church because that's what I was. And slowly I was learning a little bit about Islam through the brothers and the aunts, and it made so much sense to me. And so I started reading and I started learning, and when I told my husband, I want to become a Muslim, he said, yes, let's do this. He says, I knew you would become Muslim. I never, never, you know, I, I read like a, maybe a paragraph or something about Islam, but we just put it away. Not, it, it was like it was shut off to me. We were Christians, and then they, were, they told us about like, you know, like, Jesus Christ wasn't God because we believed that he was God and then slowly they told us you know no this is not God you know there's only one God so we did my brother did research and investigation so and then we studied about Islam and that's how we became Muslims. One time and he asked uh, the priest about Jesus Christ being the son of God that he had been reading the Quran and it didn't make sense what it said in the Bible because they were you know he was asking them a question about the contradiction and his his response was don't worry about what it says in the Bible. Just come to church, listen to the gospel, listen to what we say, and just, you know, take the rest of it on faith. Had attended the church here in El Paso, and they said they were going to missions to Africa. They presented. I don't know if they ever went or not, but um, I was excited about going. So I pulled out those books, and I, started, I had a job, and at lunchtime I would go and I'd read these books that I had gotten from the Bible college that I had attended. 
And so to, with the idea that I'm going to read this, find out about Islam, and convert my friend over, who had no idea, you know, about, um, it, it convert him back to, to Christianity, okay? And so I started reading this, and it was saying that, that um, these Muslims would close their shops and they would go pray. They would um, give charity. They would fast. And, and, and instead of being repulsed by it, instead of looking and going, ooh, you know, or something, my heart was just being attracted to it. And I was going, the, I, I really go, you know what? This sounds like true worship true worship you know it sounds like in the Bible it says to worship the Lord your God with all your heart mind and strength that's what it sounded like could I be wrong in my faith what I believe and and realizing do I why do I believe what I believe welcome back Brother Omar, now you're talking to your friends. You're not acting with friends from high school, from early college years probably, and religion was a subject, obviously, important to you and important to them. Tell me about some of these interactions and some of the, of the conversations you had. So uh, a lot of times uh, when, when uh, we were uh, talking about uh, religion, um, a lot of it came, uh, you know, like it, it always came back to the Bible. Because that was the way that I came to Islam. And I, it was always good to argue with, uh, with my friends uh, on, in, on, on, the, on their same foundation. So for me, I started doing more and more and more research uh, in the Bible. And uh, there were so many things uh, that I was able to find uh, reading uh, the, the Bible. Um, like, for example, that Jesus never said that He was uh, the Son of God. He never says... He was God in the flesh. Um, <clears throat> he never said that he died for the cross, uh, died on the cross for our sins. And um, I would always go back to them and, and and you know tell them a lot of those those things there. And as as far as even uh, me with the, with in Islam, you know I got the 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 right message and looking through the Quran. So a lot of times I would share that information. Um, I I started trying to understand more of the wisdom and the practice. When it came to, for example, hijab, uh, the salah, the fasting, uh, the, the prayer, uh, all of these different things and, and sharing it with, uh, with my friends. I don't think at the time that many of them um, were really interested in religion at the time. It was just like a, somewhat of a topic. We would share some information and then we would move on to whatever it was that we were doing. Uh, when, I, when I ended up uh, moving to Phoenix, uh, I lived there for a short time period. Uh, that's where I met my wife. Um, I did run into, I did have some friends there. And, you know, subhanAllah, for the, for the longest time I had a couple of friends. I had a roommate. His name was Aaron Hahn. I, I, he was uh, part German. And I had a couple of other friends that were Hispanic. But with those, with those, the two Hispanic guys, we would always, always talk about religion. Uh, you know, I would talk about a lot of things that I would see, like the music and the dancing and the, the, the drinking. And I would say, you know, these are bad things. You should stay away from them and so forth. And they, they couldn't understand what was so wrong in it. But through the conversation, I'd say, you see that? Look what they're doing. Look at this and so forth. And look at the okay. reaction. And then sometimes they would come on board. And I would always ask my roommate, I, I'd say, so what do you think? You know, I used to think, subhanAllah, I used to think he didn't even, I thought he was atheist. Because he never said a word. He never said anything when we spoke about religion. I thought, this, this guy must hate me. He just, he never get, says anything. He doesn't confirm. He doesn't deny anything I have to say. Okay. But my other friends, they were, subhanAllah, they were, they were very locked in. At the, at the end of our, of our conversations, they got to the point where they said, you know, what you, what you believe in, there's a lot of truth in it. It made but sense to them. It made sense. And they said, but I'll never, I'll never accept your religion. Wow. And I said, why not? I said, if you're saying that you believe it's true, why wouldn't you accept it? And they said, because I could never do that to my family. Wow. And I said, hmm, that's, that's exactly what it says in the Quran. That, this is, that the people will say that this is what we found our forefathers uh, following. So how are they going to leave 
what, what our forefathers They're followed. not concerned about the eternal life. Well, just they are concerned about this temporary life with their family. Right, right. So uh, during, during that time period, you know, the conversations would still take place. Uh, I ended up meeting uh, my wife uh, during that time period, and it was a very short engagement. We, we ended up getting married after like two months. Great. And, uh, but prior to, she also uh, accepted Islam uh, during that time period. Prior to the marriage? Prior to, yes. Oh, no. So I think oh, like so within a month. Tell me about how you approach her with the, religious, the, the, the religion issue and how did you convince her or she was already herself convinced? Well, no, when I first met her, she, she wasn't uh, convinced. I, I saw her one time and uh, I remember that, you know, the way that she was dressing, I think she was a, attracting the wrong... Uh, Maybe just like an average American girl. Yeah, like an average American girl. But she was attracting, I guess, the wrong uh, perception, or maybe the wrong uh, sending the wrong message. Sending probably. the wrong message to the uh, to the opposite sex. Um, she 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 was wearing you know tight clothing, um, short skirts, and so forth. And I could see that it was frustrating her. I could see it. Subhanallah. And I. Just, just looking at her, I used to think to myself, I said, you know, this girl, she wants the attraction, she wants men to look at her. So that's why she's dressing like that. And I'm not going to look at her. And I would like, you know, try and turn away. And then, like I said, until one time I saw her and she was frustrated by that. And because I said, you were not looking. Not, not by me, but I think but by how everybody else was probably looking at her. I see. And I said, hmm, maybe she doesn't know. Maybe she doesn't know what she's doing. So I went to her and, you know, I, I, I started to talk to her. Uh, just real general things, you know, like, you know, I know you're going to school. Well, actually, I said, uh, you know, are you, are you going to this school and so forth? And, you know, just a lot of small talk. And, uh, you know, I had my roommate that was there with me as well. And uh, it was funny because he, he knew about my, all of my beliefs and my practices because we lived together. So he was telling, uh, you know, one day she had actually said, hey, you guys want to get together? You know, maybe we can have some pizza or something like that. And... Uh, I was like, hey, that sounds, that sounds good. We can, we can do that. And my roommate was, says, um, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. But he doesn't eat pork, okay? So um, That's where the started. <laughs> yeah, so he threw he that out there. Pork. And I remember I got a little frustrated with him. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I saw my wife, and she, she kind of like looked like, hmm, okay. And uh, I looked over at him, and then she, she left, and I said, hey, I, I don't need you to talk for me. <laughs> if I'm going to say something, I said, I, I want to explain it. I don't want you just throwing stuff out like that. And then she, she gets confused as to who I am. You know, because still at the time, I don't know if I was really 100% comfortable, you know, like just saying I'm Muslim at the time. I felt like a lot of times I wanted to say something, but then I wanted to talk, say why I did those certain things. I was afraid that if somebody just knew he's Muslim, it's like, oh, stay away from him. That's it. I, I don't want to listen to him anymore. So... So anyways, um, like I said, the conversations took place. And then uh, eventually, uh, I, I knew just by a lot of the things that she was saying, as far as her belief in Allah, in her belief in Jesus, um, and, and just, her, her, just her way of life. I said, you know, you're, you're going to be Muslim. And, I said, and on top of that, I said, I know I'm going to marry you. There was just so many things that, that, she, that she had that I had in my mind and everything just, just matched like a key or like a glove. Everything just fit right in perfectly based on my perception of what I had for a wife. That, 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 that it was her. Subhanallah. Uh, subhanallah. Be to Allah. Alhamdulillah. It was like I knew it. So anyhow, uh, I said, there, but there's no way that I'm going to marry her unless she's Muslim. That, that was the only thing. So there was a, a, a friend... There was actually a, 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 a good brother that, um, that I ended up running into. Actually, prior to me moving to Phoenix, he was actually the one that uh, my uncle Salim, he brought down to El Paso during that time. And uh, he was a very good uh, caller to Islam, very good da'iyah to, to Islam. And as a matter of fact, during that time when he came, all of my family accepted Islam. Through him? Yes, through him. So... <clears throat> there was one day that I remember we went to, and this was before I moved the first time, uh, right before I moved out of, out of the city to go to school, um, that we went to like an ishtima with the tablik jamaat, some you know, brothers that go from, from city to city 
calling people to Islam. So we went to this ishtima, and as we were sitting there, my uncle says, this is that, uh, I think that's our brother Zuhair that uh, we accepted Islam through. And I looked at him, I said, I don't know who he is. So we ended up going and approaching him, and he said, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's him, that's him. So sure enough, they gave salams, uh, they greeted each other, and uh, he started to speak. And, and he's a very charismatic speaker, very charismatic. And uh, subhanAllah, it ended up that like maybe two weeks before I moved to Phoenix, he, uh, he lives in Phoenix. He ended up, he lived in Phoenix. So he says, here, here's my card. Give me a call when you get there. So I moved over there, and praise be to Allah that when I, I arrived there, I could have gotten in a lot of you know, trouble uh, moving away from the family. I'm all by myself. But I contacted him, and uh, he, he kept me close by his side. He, he would come and visit me. Um, uh, my, he, when, I, when I first uh, met my wife, it was his wife that ended up speaking to my wife. And just after one time that my wife went to go visit with a lot of other Muslim sisters, the first time she came back, she said, I'm Muslim. Allah. And she had accepted Islam. So shortly after, that's why it was such a short engagement that after the first month, had, I, had, I, had, I, had we had an opportunity, we were both so busy, we were both going to, to, to work, we were both uh, in going to school, uh, and we all had, you know, we had different schedules. Had we had the opportunity, we probably would have been married after like a month. But uh, it took us about another month afterwards just to get to an open day where we were both together and we, we were able to get married. We're going to take a break now and we will come back and talk about your family, the extended family, and how many people at that time became Muslim and the environment around you the reaction to the whole family as a unit together, not just to you as an individual or to your uncle or to your mom, as a family in a small community in El Paso, Texas. You became Muslims and the church also has some reaction probably. I want you to talk about that to us in a little bit. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Um, went through my uh, rebel teenage years and then went away to college in Phoenix and that is where I met my husband Omar. Um, when I met him, I did dress the way he said I dressed. I dressed like a typical American teenager at the time um, as I was 18. Uh, mini skirts and blouses and high heels and the whole nine yards. But I didn't realize what I was doing. I just said, this is how everybody dresses, so this is how I'll dress. And um, as my husband was explaining, um, I did not like it. Uh, and the moment that I know he realized from him telling me this, that uh, he realized that I wasn't dressing this way for the attention of the opposite sex was when I went into the lunchroom and all the boys in the class, because we went to a tech school, there was a lot of boys and only a couple girls. And they all turned and stared. Some of them made remarks, and I turned around and walked out. And I think that was when Omar realized I wasn't doing it for the attention. And so at that point, he mustered up the courage to come and you know, say hello, introduce himself with his friends. Um, and uh, really, subhanAllah, um, my life up to that point, highs and lows, a lot more lows. I wasn't really happy with who I was. Um, I can't say that I was searching for religion because although we were brought up as Jehovah Witnesses and we practiced it until I was, you know, in my, teen, my early teens, uh, I can't say that I saw myself as a religious person. I did believe in God, um, but there were just so many other things in life that precluded religiousness in my household. Um, we weren't rich. There were a lot of us. We lived rural and you always had to worry about the weather and, you know, the animals because we had livestock. And it, it just, it, it reminds me of, uh, it's from psychology, the triangle of, you know, at what point can you reach, you know, religiousness and, and all of this. And my family wasn't at that point. Although we tried, we really weren't at that point. We were more worried about do we have enough money to pay for groceries? You know, I remember doing homework by kerosene lantern. So, I mean, 
there were a lot of things that, that kept me from being religious um, as, a, as a youth. And so then when I moved to Phoenix and I met my husband, um, I had no idea what Muslim was. The story he was telling about, hey, let's all get together and have pizza. And his roommate saying, oh, well, he's Muslim, so he can't eat pepperoni pizza. I thought it was like being diabetic. I had no clue. I was oblivious to the idea of this religion of Islam that had Muslims. And so for me, I was like, okay, whatever. He can get whatever pizza he wants. And so we went out and he slowly, slowly, uh, I guess realized that you know I was somebody that he could approach about Islam, that I was open to it. Um, he gave me a book, uh, Introduction to Islam, and I read the book. And for me, subhanAllah, I just think about it, I'm gonna get misty-eyed. All the questions that I had as a 13-year-old kid were answered in one book, and it just, everything fell into place. The role of Jesus, oh, subhanAllah, that he wasn't a mailman, that he was somebody that I could rationalize in my mind, a prophet, a messenger, just Noah and Abraham and Jesus, all of, the, you know, they're all the same in that level um, with different miracles and, and things like this, but it made sense to me. And so I went back to him, I was like, okay, tell me more. And he was like, well, you know about your dress. You know, if you don't dress like that, the boys won't treat you that way. And I told him, okay, well, what else? I mean, I don't have any other clothes. These are the only clothes I own. A man that I met maybe at best two weeks before takes me to the mall and buys me a week's worth of clothes. Who does that? A Muslim. A Muslim does that. And he said, go, try it. And so the next week I wore his, and they weren't even like, it wasn't like hijab. It wasn't anything. It was jeans instead of mini skirts. It was shirts with sleeves instead of like tank tops because we did live in Phoenix and all, you know, fairness to myself. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you try this and uh, for the week, and, you know, I was in this class with a lot of boys. I had colored my hair auburn red like three months before. My roots were already showing. It was terrible. And they didn't realize it until I changed my clothing. And at that moment, I said, there's something to this. And I went back to him and said, tell me more. And so from there, he introduced me to the Muslim family of Zuhair and Dorothea. Um, Zuhair is from Tunis. Dorothea is an American convert as well to Islam. And I took to her like my big sister. And Zuhair with his charisma and his stories. And we would sit there so long that we were almost falling asleep in his apartment. And... Um, just the idea of learning about this. You're just so hungry for it. Um, so I, I was very intrigued from the very beginning. And um, my test to Islam came uh, when I went, I was supposed to go to a women's halakha. There was a, a, a group of Bangladeshi sisters who came and they were going to one of the ladies' house that I knew and they said, please come. I said, okay. And I had called Omar and I said, Omar, um, can I borrow your car? Because he had a car that had air conditioning, and I did not. I had a car that did not have air conditioning. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you can come and switch. So I put on the, uh, the, the dress that I had, was given by one of his aunts, and um, my white hijab, and I drove over to his house and switched cars. So I went up to his apartment, and when we were giving the keys, I hit my elbow on his door jam. And subhanAllah, I had a, a wart on my elbow. And when I hit it, Oh, it started bleeding and I had blood all over my sleeve and I went into and used his apartment to wash in the bathroom and I was in the bathroom with, you know, like water and blood stains on the, my dress and I was like, I can't go. I can't go. I mean, how, how can I go like this? And I was really upset because I really wanted to go and I just took a breath and was like, you know what? They're not going to care. They're going to laugh at the idea that, oh, look at you, you know, you have, look at what, what happened to you? Why are you so wet? You know, um, I put some band-aids on it, washed it out as best I could and left. And it was at that halika, that group of women talking that something in my heart moved. And at that moment, I, I don't know what I need to do. I don't even know what it all entails, but I want to be like you guys. I want to be Muslim like you. I had my red fingernail polish on and, and they told me, okay, well, you say this. And even to this day, saying the Shahada, like you have new Muslim sisters who come in and you're like, oh, say the Shahada, help her. I get so nervous, I forget the words because the pressure is so strong because of the weight of the words. The, the, 
the life-changing effect that those words have. To say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is just the biggest thing that I've ever done in my life. And so alhamdulillah, I became Muslim. And I went back to Omar's apartment to give him back his, uh, his car keys. And he was like, what happened to you? I said, I'm Muslim. And he was like, what? I mean, he knew, I think, that it was coming, but he didn't think it was going to happen this quickly. And um, like he said, we met on October 1st, and uh, we got married on November 29th. And we actually got married after a trip down here to meet his, I had already met his family, but he had not met mine. Um, and so we had gone to New Mexico and meeting my family was life-changing for him. Um, not quite as life-changing as the Shahada was for me, but uh, it's pretty surreal. Um, my husband, you know, lived in, in El Paso in a city and his, you know, middle-class lifestyle and mashallah, his mother is beautiful and just, I mean, everything you like see on television. And then you go to, you know, the boondocks of New Mexico down a quarter mile dirt road uh, to a trailer house with animals running around. And my little sister's there and they look like rug rats, dirty rug rats, you know. Um, it, it was very um, challenging. I think that might have been his challenge in the marriage part of our relationship because realizing it's not just this one. I'm getting all of this too. <laughs> um, but uh, he sat there, honest to goodness, he sat on the sofa with the shotgun hanging on the wall behind him, traumatized for about two hours, completely speechless. He tells me later that he was contemplating leaving. He goes, I wonder what would happen if I just got up and walked out. Would anybody notice? He was that out of his world. Um, it was just something he never thought he would experience. Um, funny story. I mean, my mom's first impression on him was not like his mom's first impression of, on me. Uh, my mom, uh, sitting there, it's November, um, and it's cold, and my little sisters come running in, and they're like, Mom, the dog tried biting so-and-so, one of the neighbor kids. And my mom's like, that's it, that's it. And she starts putting on her coveralls, and she grabs a shotgun from above my husband's shocked head. Um, and she goes outside, and my husband's like, what's going, what is she going to do? And I said, she's going to go kill. I said, no, she's going to, she's going to give the dog a lead injection. Those were my exact words. And he was like, what? I said, she's going to kill the dog. No, she's not. No, she's not. And I'm sorry to all the, you know, humane people out there, but this is life in rural New Mexico, apparently. Um, and so she went out there and she shot the dog and my husband just could not believe it. And he, he was, no, no, she didn't. She just shot into the air. I said, yeah, let's go. Yeah, she, I'm telling you, she shot the dog. Because in my childhood, we lost a lot of dogs. My mom had zero tolerance for dogs that bit. And so my, we go outside, and he's like, so, uh, Debbie. And my mom has this dead dog on her shoulder. And she flings it in the back of the truck. And she's like, I'll be back. I'm going to go dump this. And my husband was just stunned, floored. So that was the introduction. That's what he married into. And um, it, it's crazy. It's true. Um, I met his mom and her nice clothes and her, you know, pantyhose and just beautiful house. And, oh, let's go shopping. And my mom kills a dog. I mean, <laughs> where's, the, where's the fairness in that? But um, for me, um, my family initially, um, it was, we had our first child within a year. Um, and so I think it was actually after our second child, because we have four. So our second child, which would have been three or four years into the marriage, um, I started covering hijab after I had our second. And um, we went up there for Thanksgiving, and we were sitting there. And Zued was small at the time, uh, still in diapers. And my mom was going to go into town, into the small town where we lived. And I said, I'll go with you. She's like, no, 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 it's okay. Just tell me what you need. I was like, no, no, no I, I want to get out. I'll go with you. No, 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 just I'll pick up whatever you need. You don't need to go. And I was like, wait a second. I was like, mom, are you embarrassed to take me out because I'm wearing a scarf? I said, mom, think about how I dressed in the 90s because I was totally into the punk thing and I wore psychedelic colors and had weird hairdos and everything. And she paused. All right, let's go. And then that was it. There was never any anything else about my wearing hijab. And um, my parents also didn't know anything about Islam. 
Um, they they were probably like me, thinking it was a medical illness as opposed to a religion. Um, so I was impressed with my family, how openly, um, and all my siblings are accepting of it, um, their spouses as well, my mom, my father. Since then, they've both divorced, my mom and my dad, um, but you know, my dad's new wife accepting. I mean, I've been blessed. Um, I do have a few bumps along the road. My grandmother, who's in her late 80s, um, says the only thing I ever did to disappoint her was become Muslim, but uh, she'll get over it, inshallah. And, uh, and I pray every day that my family becomes Muslim. And inshallah, I, you know, I see glimmers of hope in some of my siblings. My oldest sister said that she believes, but she couldn't see her living, herself living this lifestyle. So she never has converted. So. Talk about this change of lifestyle. The Welcome back. Brother Omar, you got married now. Your mother is a Muslim. Your, your whole family, basically. And some members of the extended family became Muslims. As I learned when I met you guys yesterday, there are about 94 Muslim members in this family. Tell me now, you moved back from Phoenix, back to El Paso with your wife. And the community of Muslims is still small. How was the reception in the neighborhood, in the schools, in the workplace for all of you? Because some of the sisters started wearing hijabs and you were openly declaring your Islam and uh, practicing your religion in a place where it was a strange thing. Can you tell me about that period brief briefly, please? So we, we came, uh, we moved back to, uh, to El Paso, um, and, and the masjid, it was, it was common that many of the Muslims, uh, they knew who our family was. As a matter of fact, they would refer to our family as Orozco, because that's, from my grandmother down, that's, that's uh, my mother's maiden name, Orozco, so they say, oh, the Orozco. Um, so it was, it was fairly common, commonly known amongst the, the Muslim community. After 9-11 after took place, that's when really I think everything just kind of exploded uh, in, in the community. Um, here, it was, it was nothing like some of the horror stories that we heard in other cities. Um, at that time, my, my wife was actually working uh, as the secretary of the masjid. And during that time, we got so many phone calls uh, in, in the masjid of people saying, you know, is anybody harming you? Um, we want to help you. Supportive you need us, calls. Supportive calls, yes. Beautiful. Asking us, do you, do you need us to buy you groceries? If anybody harms you, please let us know. We know that this is not, this is not you all. This is not your, your religion. This was just a small, isolated incident. And uh, so the reception here was very nice. Even for my wife, I told her. I said, I was, I, I was stranded actually in, in South Texas by Brownsville. And I told her, I said, you know, they grounded all the flights. I said, don't go anywhere. I said, wait till I get back which is probably like a few days before they, wow. they allowed the, uh, the airplanes to go back up. And uh, she didn't listen to me, of course, and, and she ended up going out on her own. Um, and subhanAllah, the reception was just great from the community here in El Paso. Beautiful. The, the, the people came up to her and they said, if anybody's doing anything wrong to you, let me know. Excellent. And some people asked you, well, do you need me to walk Excellent. with you? So you have... The support system. We had a, a great I support got. system right. here, but um, you know, one one of the things that for me, I, I I just it seems like it's so common to have a, an entire family in Islam because I was in it, but looking at so many other Muslims that that live across all all across the United States, that it's strange to see that a whole entire family accepted Islam as a whole. That's right. That's what's so interesting about this program. We talked to many people in your extended family and your immediate family too. But for a whole family in a community like El Paso's community, that is unusual, extremely unusual. There was no harassment, as you said. 
Tell me, did you share with some people what is the most intriguing things in Islam to you and to your family? Did people ask you, were there, were there any curiosity about what attracted you guys to this religion? Share with the viewers, and probably we will end with this, and what's your advice to people who are searching, or they have questions, and they go to church like, just like you and your family did. Mm -hmm. But some of the things does not, or do not resonate with them. They do not make, make sense to them. What do you have to tell them? Uh, for me, and, and everybody's uh, journey was different. Uh, for, for me, I, I, like I said, it was very easy for me to come to Islam. I felt like I had already believed uh, in the ways and the practice. And then when we started turning to the Bible, and, and that would be my advice for anybody, is anything that you believe in uh, as a Catholic or as a Christian, confirm it in your book. Go back to the source and say, Just like is we this... teach in Islam. We'll exactly. Go and check it out. Right. Read the Quran before you practice or believe in it. If it is not there, don't take it. Right, right. And I think so many people would be shocked to find out what exactly the Bible is telling us, what it's asking us to do, what did they teach in the Old Testament, what did they teach in the New Testament. And for me, that's really where, how, how I confirmed everything in, in, in my beliefs today was through the Bible. And then looking back at it now, uh, praise, praise be to Allah that, that He guided us uh, to this religion uh, because it, it just really straightened out our lives, even as a family. A lot of times you, you see families that don't talk to each other. The brother doesn't like so-and-so or the brothers don't talk. I remember specifically one time my brother, I, I, him and I, we used to work at the same company. Every day he would come to my, my desk and we would talk before he would leave. And one guy, he came up to us and he said, that's beautiful. And we looked at him and we said, well, what are you talking about? He said, two brothers talking. Beautiful. And I said, we, we looked at each other, we're thinking like, this, what, is this guy crazy? And he says, you know, in my family, I haven't talked to my brother in years. Wow. And, I, and, I, and, I, and how did Islam strengthen your family ties? Right, and, and I, what and I saw I, yesterday was amazing. But tell me a little bit about that. And I thought about that, and I said, "Subhanallah, I mean, this is this is from Islam. This is only from Islam that we have these these good ties with each other because <clears throat> the drinking, you know, the partying, all of these things that create tension between family members. Islam puts that away. It says, you know, and what, and that's one of the beauty." Uh, uh, the, the, be the beautiful things about Islam is it promotes the good and it tells you to stay away from the evil. And when you keep the evil away, it really takes away a lot of the problems. True. And that's one of the things that we see, I mean, alhamdulillah, that, that a, a family as big as ours, that we don't have those issues of we're not talking to this guy or let's There's not, no back we're not by them, yeah, or, or, or boycotting this family member because of something that took place. Um, and, and like I said, this is all through Islam. That, that, we, that we see this. And alhamdulillah that, uh, that Allah blessed us and blessed our family that we all came to Islam as a whole because like I said before, it's, it's, it's strange to, to, to listen or to hear. A lot of times you hear one or two people accepted Islam in a family, but it's rare to hear that the whole entire family came to, to, to something that was, especially as, as, as religion, that people came to it uh, as a whole. And beautiful. that's only a mercy from, from, from God. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful way to end it. It is a mercy from God. Our Prophet was sent as a mercy to humanity. And Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah that we had this opportunity to talk with you, meet you with your family. Thank you so much for having us at your home, for talking with us. And my dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Islam is a beautiful way of life. And we invite you at least to explore it and see what's in it. And do not deprive yourself from the true salvation and from the happiness in the eternal life. Do not be stubborn. And at the same time, do not believe everything you heard from your elders, from your forefathers, or anybody. Just accept it blindly. We invite you to explore Islam and take the path to guidance and then decide.
Thank you for watching and may God bless you. Subhana man shahidat bi wahdati lo